Hello class, this is Mr. Sutton, and today we're going to be talking about congruent triangles. We're going to be talking about corresponding parts of congruent triangles, and as well as congruent statements. So congruent figures, two figures are congruent if they have the same size and shape. So we can see that these two figures are congruent because they have the same side lengths as well as the same angle lengths. So they are the same size and shape. They're also both triangles. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD. Now notice I said EFD. You might have uh, wanted to say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, um, but I said EFD for a specific reason. We want to make sure that we, in our congruent statements, are writing these uh, points out in the same order. So since I said A, B, C, I started with A. I started with this angle here with the single tick mark. So that means in this part of the congruent statement, I need to start with E because E has the single tick mark. So I went from one to two to three. So I need to do the same thing over here. I went from one to two to three. So that's why I said E, F, D. So that is how you need to write your congruence statements. This is the correct way to write them. So this next part says the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are always congruent. So given that these two triangles are congruent, given just this statement here, we can come up with all of these other statements. So even if we didn't have this picture where we could see these parts were congruent, given just this piece of information where we have these two triangles are congruent, we could come up with all of these parts are congruent. And this is why uh, we want to make sure we write our triangles in the correct order, because uh, that allows us to come up with the parts without looking at the picture. So just looking at this, I can see that A corresponds to E. So I can say angle A corresponds to angle E. Uh, B corresponds to F, so I can say angle B corresponds to angle F. Uh, C corresponds to D, so angle C is congruent to angle D. And then we can do the same thing with the sides. We have side AB is congruent to EF, BC is congruent to FD, and then CA is congruent to DE. So even without a picture, we can come up with the correct uh, congruent part statements. If you had uh, this written a different way that was not correct if you said angle uh, triangle abc is congruent to triangle def you would not be able to come up with the correct congruent parts that's why it's important to uh, make sure you write your congruent statement in the right order so we're going to practice writing congruent statements uh, the triangles drawn below are congruent so if you're not sure we're, we're giving you that information that they are congruent write a congruent statement for the triangles so I'm going to go ahead and say triangle ABC. This first one, it doesn't matter which order you choose. You could say ACB, you could say CAB, however you want to write it. Uh, what matters is the second one, you want to make sure you follow the same order. So since I started with A, the same uh, point in this triangle would be D. And then it went across this one tick mark line to B. So here we would go to F. I forgot my triangle sign, so triangle D, F. And then we went from B to C, so across the three tick mark line. So we'd go from F to E. So we would say triangle D, F, E. So the statement would be triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, F, E. So now looking at this statement, we should be able to come up with all parts congruent because we have it in the right order. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, the triangles drawn below are congruent. Write a congruent statement for the triangles. So we have these two right triangles. So I'm going to start with triangle VST. Again, it doesn't matter how you start it. All that matters is that you follow the same pattern. So if I said VST, then in this triangle, the corresponding point for V is T. So we would go from T to U to V. So triangle VST corresponds, is congruent to triangle T U V. 
All right, so here we have two triangles, and these two triangles are congruent. Write a congruent statement for these two triangles. And so I'm going to start with this triangle on the left, and I'm going to say triangle, I'm going to say PLO is congruent to, since I started at PP actually corresponds to itself, in these two triangles and since we went up to L before now we're going to go up to M so we would say it's congruent to triangle P M N so we went up and then down so we're going to go up and then down here so make sure you are keeping track of which points correspond to each other uh, so uh, you want to think about how the triangles are rotated so like in this one these triangles are rotated right so we started at V and we went down to S and then over to T. So when we think about how it's rotated, we would start at T and go up to U and left to V, right? So you wanna think about which parts correspond to each other in order to write your congruent statement. Here we have kind of an algebraic question. Uh, find the value of X and the value of Y given that these two triangles are congruent. And so it doesn't tell us which parts are congruent in the picture, but we can tell which parts are congruent in the picture because of the congruence statement ABC is congruent to DEF. So that means that uh, angle A would have to be congruent to angle D, which already helps us uh, get ready to solve here because now I know that this 87 degree angle is congruent to this 5X plus 2 angle. So I can use that information to create an equation. 87 equals 5x plus 2. And now I can solve this equation for x. Subtract 2 on both sides. Divide both sides by 5. And once we divide by 5, we get x equals 17 for that. Uh, so the other piece we want to find is y. What is y? Uh, so we can use this piece of information here. We know that angle E is 42. And if we look back at our congruent statement, angle E should correspond to angle B. So now I know that this angle right here, whoops, is 42. And now I have all three angles I can say that uh, if I add these together, it should equal 180. So even though I don't know what this is, I can go ahead and create an equation. 87 plus 42 plus 3y equals 180. Now I have an equation that I can solve for y, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And when I solve this for y, I got y equals 17 as well, actually. Uh, so make sure you work through this problem. Make sure you get the same results as I do. And I think this might be the last slide here. Identify all congruent sides and angles given the congruence statement. So this is uh, what we've been talking about, where we want to look at the statements to identify all parts congruent. So just based off the statement, because these statements we know are written in a particular order, we know what all the parts are. So A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, C corresponds to F. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out all of the uh, congruent statements based off of that information. So angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, angle C is congruent to angle F. Side AB is congruent to side DE, side BC is congruent to side EF, and side CA is congruent to side FD. Uh, we want to do the same thing for this congruent statement down here. I'm going to go ahead and write all of these uh, congruent parts statement. Go ahead and do that as well. Make sure you get the same thing that I get. So since J corresponds to G, K corresponds to H, and L corresponds to I, I got angle G. This angle J is congruent to angle G. Angle K is congruent to angle H. Angle L is congruent to angle I. Uh, side JK is congruent to side GH, side KL is congruent to side HI, side LJ is congruent to side IG. So I believe this is the last slide I have here. Yep. So 
that is all for today's lesson. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure you are signing up for office hours and make sure you are asking your teacher during class. Have a good day.